Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's riff, what are we going to talk about? The Acoustic Energy AE500, Mike. Which I have just heard for the first time ever. And to say I'm impressed is a massive understatement. They are stunningly <laughs> good, aren't they? I mean, yeah. really, really good. Yep. Um, and, and I know you've you've done... Oh my gosh, I dread to think how many group tests in your time for speakers. Um, and I've got, I've got two questions for yeah. you. Question number one is, in your opinion, what is the most difficult price of speaker bracket category? Um, is it sort of cheap, expensive or mid-range? What's the hardest one to sort of judge and, yeah. and criticise? Which, which is the most challenging, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I think that's a really good question. So you could, you could say... It could be three answers, right? Okay. Very quickly. Um, so many people say, you know, the ultimate speaker. So you've got a massive budget and it's just a kind of race to get the very best out of with, with unlimited funds. Yeah, yeah. But if you ask many speaker designers, they'll say the hardest thing to do is the budget speaker. It's yes. the cheap speaker. Okay. Um, uh, because basically you've got to try and do reasonably well with almost no money. Sure. Um, now, when you say yeah. budget, now, if you were talking two, three, four hundred pounds, yeah. you kind of get it because you know you're not going to get an amazing sound because it's going to be flawed in some way or another because you're going to have compromises in your design. Yeah. But if you give yourself a little bit more budget, doesn't that present a real challenge? Yep. So these these speakers cost... Well, these are these are one thousand and fifty pounds, so now. they're right on that thousand yeah. pound bracket. And that was going to be my third answer. Okay. So, so it's kind of budget plus category. Okay, you know. Okay, yes. So if you're yeah. if you're kind of in budget, if you're sort of right at the bottom end of the market, it's just like if you can even get a sound out of them, you know, that you're doing well. Sure. But sure. But at this price, then. You can, if you know what you're doing, make them sound very good. But it's difficult. It's very difficult. And most people don't know how to do it. And I think, and I was going to get my, sort of my second part of my question was, in all the group tests you've done, I bet this is a really difficult category to judge. Yeah. Because yeah. of those flaws. Because, yep. you know, you haven't quite enough, quite got enough money as a designer to make the product you want. You're going to have your compromises. But it's still a price tag. It's still a grand, isn't it? Any way you yes. look at it. So it's got to sound great, but you haven't got much budget. So that's a tricky conundrum already, isn't it? Absolutely. So, so yeah. um, And I know you've done loads of group tests. Yeah. Where do these sit? Well, um, I think they're up there with the very best. Um, um, yes. So, yeah. Um, so for me, the... Uh, Can I bring one in? Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Look at this. That's Look at that's these. Right. These, are, these are absolutely, I think, on, right on the button. Oh. Right on the button between price and quality. Yeah. And in fact, they're beautifully made. You, you've got to... Do you know, AE are doing some great stuff at the moment. We've done a few AE reviews, haven't yeah. we? We've done the Corinium's... We did the uh, the A1 Actives, which I loved, yep. as you know. Um, yes, you never stopped talking about <coughs> them for about two years. Absolutely, which I really loved. But I tell you what, they are they they're doing some great speakers now. Yeah. In ter- not just in terms of quality design, but just just the you know just aesthetically, I think they're stunning. Yeah. I like them in white as well. I've yeah. got to say. Yeah. And then you know things like really quality binding posts yeah. on the back. Um, seriously hefty. I don't know what's in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so really nice drive units here. Yeah. yeah. These these look like they're all all carbon. Yeah, these are carbon fiber drivers and so I mean to me the 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 uh the A one hundreds, the A three hundreds, acoustic energies, you know, they're they're very good, but you're 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 aware and this is no offence to them because every speaker at, the, at their respective price point sounds compromised. But to me, the, the great thing about the 500s is you can spend a grand on them and you listen to music and you don't feel like you're listening to cheap speakers. In fact, we've just come from listening to my NS1000s. Um, and okay, they're nowhere near as good as that, but, but they are still lots of fun. They're great fun and they've got a kind of big, warm they really have. kind of soul, <laughs> haven't they? Yeah. They're like a kind of yeah. happy puppy running around, you know, uh, wagging I- its tail. They're they're um, brilliant, and they 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 do so many things 
yeah. incredibly well. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I like generally about smaller speakers is you get this amazing sort of um, effect how the speakers can disappear. Yeah. But this image, like yeah. there's no tomorrow, don't yeah. they? They're just fantastic. Yeah. Um, and and I, I just you know, and they've got they've got stunning amounts of bass. Yeah. For the size of the of the of the drivers. Yeah. Um, they're not bright in any way, shape, no. or form, are they? No. And I think often that when you have you know, and we've heard some strange sort of drive units, you know, from ribbons to Kevlar to paper to whatever. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you try and mess around with a design and you, it can end up with just a very bright speaker. Not at all with these, is it? In fact, it's a very smooth top end. Isn't yeah. It? I wouldn't say they were dull. No. Nope. By any stretch of the imagination. No, they're not dull. That's a really great point. They're not dull, but they are far less bright than many speakers. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 And in fact... Um, we were listening to uh, we were listening to Marillion. Yeah. Um, we were listening to Kaylee, which actually is quite a bright recording. Yeah. It's sort of it's like you said, it's like an FM radio recording. Yeah. Is it mixed for FM? Um, and, and in fact, it wasn't too bad on these yeah. at all, was it? it? Was it was actually really quite listenable for for yeah. a difficult uh, for you know a diffi- difficultly produced yeah challenging kind of producer calmed album. it down slightly very much it? so yeah so, very yeah. much so took the sting out. Um, and we listen to this. So component-wise, we listen yeah. to your amazing CD player, which is your a Sony ES, which you're using as a transport. Yeah, CDP the, 3000 ES, I think. Which is the coolest-looking CD player <laughs> ever, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's got just like the most amazing loading mechanism, hasn't it? Because yeah. the whole thing shifts it's around. Top loader, yeah. Uh, but it's not. It's more than that. Yeah, it? well, it's, they're kind of movable. Yeah. I forgot what Sony called it now, but they're kind of funny. Uh, uh, ace, I yeah. think they call it. Just, <laughs> just ace. Uh, so that's gorgeous. And then we listened to that through. I mean, we had quite a setup, to be fair with these. So we yeah. had your Hugo TT2, which yep. is go to. And then we had the the um, the M8 Musical Fidelity yep. uh, amplifier, which yes. we reviewed as well, yes. uh, which is a beast of an amp. Yep. Um, but I mean, you know, obviously no problem at all in driving these no. at all. No. Um, although actually they are a little bit of a challenging load. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 you know, they're a little bit harder than some. They're, they've nominal impedance of six ohms. 87 quoted 87 db quoted which is not bad okay. but you know they're they're, okay. they're certainly not on the kind of easy side that will go super loud for no watts and the conversation um, we had was yeah. would the a1 musical fidelity a1 drive these? yes and i think you said just just about yeah, yeah for most rooms i think yeah um and we're talking about the new one the, the old one, one with no chance no no uh, but i think yeah. that you'd be you'd go really well with something like this with um an exposure pre power yep. 35 series yep. something around there nva yeah or or even you know uh, the the 3510 integrated that yes. would work well that would yep. that would work really nicely plenty actually. of grunt and uh, smooth sweet sounding amp and these are smooth and sweet sounding yes. yeah so if you're kind of into that sort of you know sound that doesn't cut your head off uh, then then it'd be a nice it'd be a nice match i think it'd be a stunning yeah. match actually yeah. it'd be really interesting to hear these but um, but I, A are just doing a great range of speakers at the moment, and these yeah. these these I've never heard these before, and they are magnificently good. Yeah, well, I think to me the this um, so the, the the carbon fiber drive units are are really good. They're um, Akus Kenji's own. Uh, there's nothing new about carbon fiber. Um, I've got um, just out in my other room. I've got a pair of Sony three way. Uh, very big stand mounters uh, from 1975, which got carbon fiber drive units. So um, it's not like, uh, you know, it was invented yesterday, but these are done very well. And carbon fibers got always, to me, has had a kind of slightly dark sound. It it, 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 it doesn't sort of ring and, and it's not sort of hard. And one of my favorite speakers when I was at Hi-Fi World uh, back in the 90s was there was a World Audio Design um, I think it was KLS3 speaker, which was used Audax carbon fiber drive units, and it always had a deep and velvety sound, which is kind of similar to these actually. Um, but uh, I think one of those Audax drivers cost about the, the same as this whole speaker, though. So, yeah, no, sure. So, sure. Um, but you know, the point is that carbon fiber, uh, if done well, can, can can sound very good. Both tweeter and um, uh, mid bass are carbon fiber in uh, dome and cone respectively um, and um, the result is along with the cabinets which are really good they're really heavy aren't they they really are eight they're kilograms really solid and they yeah. they're basically got constrained layer damping so they've got as far as i know a kind of uh, sandwich of sorbothane rubber in between mdf uh, uh, panels so surprisingly neutral cabinet um, so 
basically the whole package has done really well mm. I think stunningly um, well it, 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 it works so well for, for a thousand pounds or thousand and fifty we sat there thinking, how can it be any better? <laughs> I, know. You know? I know, I really so, was, yeah. I really was. You know, and, and, and it's one of those, yeah. you know, we played a song and the first song we played, I started smiling and just think, this is really great. Yeah. This is really, really yeah. cool. Um, and speaking of which, we played we played some, some interesting music, some eclectic music. We yeah. played um, uh, Easy Pieces yeah. by Lloyd Cole and the Commotions. Yeah. Their difficult second album, yeah. uh, actually, uh, which it's is... a um, good one, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really good. Look at that, Polydor label, lovely. Yeah, um, yeah excellent. And, and I, I so, really like that album. Yeah. I, I always have. Um, I don't think it's as good as their first but Agreed. it's a terrific, you yeah. know, it's it's, it's just, you know, it's a terrific uh, attempt at a follow up. Yeah, it's a nice album. Really so nice. I I think we were students when that came out. We were. And I was in Bristol. I remember walking around Clifton in, in the summertime of probably 85, 86 and through every window practically easy pieces yes. was blaring yeah. out every you know. every uh, coffee house and exactly and cafe student you know, uh, student uh, yes. cafe culture song wasn't it so, absolutely yeah. and, and the similar era um which yeah. is actually one of my favorite albums was scritty politi yeah. cupid in sight 95 85 85 i, I beg your pardon yeah. my yeah. bad um really good really nicely recorded actually yeah uh, with a bit of green guard side yep there we absolutely. are look at that fabulous fabulous yeah. fabulous yeah really love that um, great album. Haven't heard that in a while, actually. Really um, well recorded album. Yeah, it's, in, and in fact, you said it's one of those albums where the better the system, the better the album sounds. Yeah, uh, and yeah, you know, which is which I think is a, a nice thing to to, yeah. to be able to say. So it's very kind like of analog, uh, high quality analog recording. I think. Yes, and then um, to to top off our, mm, eight, our 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 student fantastic listening. Another, I think it's about eighty five. That that one as well. Now, you may not have heard of this. Okay. These guys. This is Micro Disney. Yeah. Um, and this is this was a band which actually you introduced me to. Yeah. Oh my God! Years and years and years ago, when this when when um, uh, gosh, probably. The Clock Comes Down the Stairs came out, or one of their first albums. Yep. Um, and I th- I thought uh, this was stunning. And, yeah. and in fact, this recording on the Peel Sessions album yeah. is absolutely fantastic. It's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. We played yeah. Town to Town, um, which was nearly a hit. Yes. Oh my gosh, Micro yeah. Disney nearly had a hit. Yeah. If you haven't heard of Micro Disney and you haven't played yeah. Town to Town, then then do it. You know, Stream it, find it, get a copy yeah. of this. It's a great album. It sounded so good through these. I think it I, I was, could not believe it. I used to live just down the road from BBC Made of Studios, and Did you? That yeah. in the in the in the nineties, and um, you know that that was there were so many great bands going through there, and there yes. had been so many great bands, and they had very basic recording facilities, just high quality old school analog. I, I can't remember it was like sixteen track or something. It wasn't anything special at all, but. It was kind of less is more. Every band that went in there always ended up doing great stuff, I think. It, it, you know, it's so, amazing because yeah. actually for me, it, this Peel Sessions album sounded much better than actually their original yeah. original studio yeah. album. Um, but um, the BBC engineers back in the day were amazing, weren't they? Yeah. You know, they were really cool. They sort of, they were alchemists, weren't they? Yeah. You know, but it, sometimes it just goes to show less is more. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. when you think of, say, for example, some of the early... Miles Davis albums, things like that, where you've just got a pair of microphones and that's it. Yeah. You know, straight onto reel to reel. You can't really get any more pure than that, no. can you? No. And actually, speakers like this relish yeah. in that kind of music, don't yeah. they? And these, in particular, with listening to, to those songs, were just stunning. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. I think these have got a very. Um, so, firstly, tonally, then we, we've mentioned that they're, 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 they're sort of slightly dark sounding. They're not dull, but they're just not edgy and bright. Um, but they've their real quality, I think, is rhythmically. Mm. You know, they they just they're a kind of puppy dog bouncing around in a field kind of thing. They they just they're really good at rhythms. They make every piece of music sound fun, yes, engaging. The yeah, bass yeah. is very fluid. Obviously, it's not very extended because it's a small stand mount, smallish stand mounter. Um, you say that it's it's pretty damn good though, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's so the upper bass is, is very convincing, I think. And, it, um, you know, but you're not going to get church organs out of it. But um, it, it, it just, what there is, is just great, isn't it? Yeah, and, amazingly um, good. And it all ties in really well with the mid-band. Mid-band's kind of clean and reasonably open, you know, certainly very open for the price of the speaker. Um, and, and it's just got a, it's a happy sounding speaker, isn't it? It really think. is. So, I, I can't imagine... Yeah. Finding another pair of thousand pound speakers as good as this. 
No. I really can't, you know, from having listened to these today. I'm gutted they haven't been on my radar before. Yeah. I really am, because I think they're just absolutely a little, just a, a little hi-fi gem, aren't they? They are. We don't find them all that no. often. You know, absolutely. But it's once in a while, yeah. you know, we sort of, you know, you, th- you listen to something, you go, that is way better yeah. than the sum of its parts. It's like kind of chord Hugo or Mojo, isn't it? It's like... It's- yes really really good yes unexpectedly good for what it is yeah and yeah it's too cheap for what it is probably the the, yeah. the mojo more than anything because yeah. you know it's it's a sort of rinky dink yeah you know dac and it doesn't it looks like a toy yeah and it sounds amazing you yeah. know and these yeah. are tiny little speakers and you put them on and it's like whoa yeah. where's all that sound come from yeah yeah you know so adore these yep. absolutely adore these um can we do a reformator on them yes I'm, what are you going to give these i'm going to give them 10 yeah so um, <laughs> we don't do that very often. No, no, we don't. But I, I, I just think that what more can you ask from a speaker at this price? <laughs> you know, that says it all, doesn't super it? Super musical, really civilized, but still musical. You, normally, you get kind of uncivilized, hard and impressive sounding musical, or you get kind of dull and boring. But this is kind of you know um, smooth, but 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 super fun and uh, really well made. Uh, beautifully voiced, way more than the sum of the parts, I'd say. Um, and I think it's one of Musical Fidelity's best speakers. That's saying a lot because... Acoustic energy. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> Even. Sorry, we've, we've, you know, we've, just, we've been, just been talking about, about the Musical Fidelity. Thank you, Mike. Um, uh, yeah, even <laughs> them as well. Be one of, it no, would be yes. one of their best speakers well, if they one, it. It's Absolutely. definitely one of Musical Fidelity's <laughs> best speakers. It's the best thing they've ever done. But uh, if, they, if they'd done it, um, <laughs> but they haven't. So, yeah, so um, we just did the, we did the Carini- Carinium not long ago. Uh, from Acoustic Energy, that's fantastic. They were really good. Really good. And, and to me, this speaker started their run of really high quality, uh, you know, designs. Yeah. Um, they do a, um, and I think this came out about four years ago, roughly four or five years ago. Um, and the, the other one in the range, they do a, a 509, which is a small, sta- a small floor stander, and a, and a 520, which is a big floor stander. And I really like the 509 as well. The 520 is great, but to me, it just doesn't have the sort of magic of the the 509 and these are both somehow just absolutely sort no, of sure. 10 out of 10 uh, uh, rather than 9 out of 10. Sure. No, so, sure, sure. Yeah. So there we go. How about you? Well, you played, we played Perfect Blue from Luke on the Commotion. So it was the first song we heard on them and it was a 10 within five seconds. <laughs> it was just, there's no two ways about it. It was absolutely straight off the bat. Wow. Cool. So you love those. So... Uh, when you when you got when you heard the um, uh, the AE one actives, yes. you didn't stop talking about them for two years. No, so is this going to happen again now, Mike? Um, <laughs> it's it's I, I'm just so impressed with what yeah. AE are doing. They're really good. You know, they? they're doing some great speakers. So, so the, the Corinium was yeah. you know was as you say was awesome as well. So you know, hats off to them. But yeah, you're probably not going to have me shut up about these for a while. So <laughs> there we go. Um, and on that on that note, on that, on that apology, so, <laughs> we're going to be talking about these for a while. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. We'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.